What is going on you guys? My name is Hugh and welcome to a brand new project build. Uh, wait a minute. Start over. What is going on you guys? My name is Hugh and welcome to a brand new costume build, which I haven't done one in a long time. I think the last costume build I did was like, what, the Star Wars thingamajiggy? Yeah, that, I think. I don't know. But anyway, this one's going to be super exciting. It is my very first Spider-Man outfit. Um, it's not from any particular movie or I guess it's from a specific video game. It's from the PS4 Spider-Man. But this was an unlockable suit. Now, I don't know much about the lore behind the suit. Um, you can kind of Google it and get an idea of what this suit is about and where it came from. And I believe he created this to because he just found a new material that he wanted to build his costume out of and it actually eliminated a lot of sound so it's actually a really good stealth outfit if you guys want to go check out and comment i'll see if i can find a link uh for the comic down in the description below or there will be a video that kind of talks a little bit more about the costume i'll leave that down there so you can do some research but all i know is it's blue it's green it looks sick and that is what we're going to be building in this i think three-part video series but in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a face mask. Now, this particular template you can actually get in the description below. Um, I was able to buy this template from Etsy, and it's actually a very, very high quality uh, file. Thing is, and keep in mind, I had to work with this quite a bit to get it the way it is and to get it to fit my face properly. So without further ado, let's get this first video started and build ourselves a custom face mask. Here are the materials you will need. A hot glue gun. Get, get the stupid thing off it. There we go. Hot glue gun. Some crafting foam from either Joann's or Hobby Lobby. A pair of scissors. A printer. Because obviously if you can't use a printer, you can't print anything and you can't get anything done. Got it? A lightsaber. Doodle bob. Er, uh, I mean paper. And, of course, a pencil. Now this is the website that I use to get the template. This guy makes some really cool, high quality templates that you can download for three bucks, three or four dollars, and you can actually be able to customize it once you get the file downloaded. So I would highly recommend checking out more of his stuff. I'll leave his website down in the description below. Everything is off of Etsy, and I always go to Etsy to find some really cool templates or uh, collector's items. There's some really cool stuff on here, handcrafted by a lot of really cool and talented people. So once you buy the file, you actually can be able to download a couple of different versions of it. So depending on your computer, you can be able to use it on any system. So once I got it downloaded, I went ahead and clicked it. And then right away, I noticed that if I was going to print this, uh, it wasn't going to come out the right size so I had to kind of toy with it. He did say in the description that you have to mess with the size and print it a certain way to get it to fit correctly. So when I was trying to print it for the first time it came out a little wonky and it was really tiny. Yeah that ain't gonna work. So I took a different approach to it. I went ahead and stuck a piece of paper onto my computer screen and then just traced it and I was able to get the size right by scrolling in or zooming into the image on my computer. And then right away it worked because the sizing of the eyes helped me size out the rest of the mask. You guys don't have to do this, but like I said, in his instructions, when you buy the file, you do have to kind of customize it and play with it to make sure that everything fits properly. Now, once I got it traced out, turned out perfect. The eyes are the right size. And now we can cut the eyes out. Now for the rest of the mask, did the same tactic, put two pieces of paper together and just taped it onto my computer screen and went ahead and start tracing away. This process is a little tedious and it also is very time consuming so if you don't have patience 
you're not gonna like this part. But if you do have patience and you love doing this kind of stuff, this is what makes this part of the project fun. Because you can trace it out, you can size it in any way you want, you can zoom in and out of the image on your screen so then you can see how big you want it. Alright, now that we got that taken care of, let's go ahead and cut this guy out. And make sure to tape up both pieces of paper together, that way when you're cutting it out, it doesn't move around on you when you're trying to cut the mask out of there. Because it did that to me one time, and it messed up where it was cutting and then the little mask was all lopsided. Now you don't have to do these little tabs, I did those tabs myself, but I did that so once I put the mask together, just through the paper template, I wanted to make sure that it was the correct size. This is totally optional, you do not have to do this, but I did it just because I was very picky and because I'm a perfectionist, so I want to make sure I get it right and not have to keep going through it over and over and over again. Bam, there you go. So now you're going to go ahead and take your crafting foam and go ahead and use like a pocket knife or I have my trusty handy any wooden knife and then just trace the template onto the foam. Now let's go ahead and cut this out of the foam. Now that we got that cut out, let's go ahead and copy and paste this to the other side. I actually do keep some scraps, I think that way in case I need to get some extra padding inside the mask, it helps keep it a little bit stronger using extra pieces. Alright, done. Copied and pasted to the other side. Now it's time to glue those pieces together. Now as you can see here, I did a little technique just putting the glue on and then flattening with the very end of the gun so that way it kind of seeps into the foam. I used a little method called, <laughs> no pun intended, webbing when I was putting these masks together and basically all that is is just going back and forth with the glue gun and creating almost like a, a seam kind of like a fabric seam just going across like da -da 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 -da, back and forth back and forth and it makes it stronger when you do it that way so you're going over the gap and just just layering it and layering it and then that way when it dries it's soaked into the foam kind of like a piece of thread on clothing did that both to the inside and outside, that way the mask is structurally sound and it's not going to fall apart on me if I either start sweating or if the, mat if the fabric of the mask itself from the costume is going to be too tight. And there you go. It's a little messy, but I think it turned out pretty well and the size was correct. I may trim up a few edges here and there just so that um, it doesn't fit too tight or if it's a little bit wonky on my face but this was kind of fun i think this turned out really well and it's super durable i can crumple it up i can smack into it i can drop it on the ground it won't fall apart i can sweat in this and it won't disassemble itself inside the fabric mask it's perfect you guys should definitely try this out it's actually a pretty smart idea all righty so we just got done finishing the face mask i gotta mention this was a pain in the butt, like I said, to put together um, because I had to do a lot of trial and error just to make it the right size. When you get the template, do keep in mind you have to plagiarize a little bit of it to get it, you know, printed out the right way. So this was actually the end result of what I had to do. I had to get two pieces of paper and like stick it together, as you can see here. 
um, in order to get the right angle. So you have to play with it and bend it around like this. Once you get all the pieces together, then it becomes a proper size face shell. Like I said, I'll leave all the information in the description below. If you wanna get this template, I'll leave it down there. It's like four bucks for it, but this is a super high quality template and it was great to play with. So this was really fun. I, it was stressful, but it was really fun. I'm glad I might actually keep this so I can probably make more copies of this. I think I'll do a better method. I might even redo this mask at one point because some of the hot glue kind of left a lot of rough spots on there. Um, I just don't know if that's going to show throughout the mask uh, fabric when I get the costume in, but we'll see. In case you guys are wondering, this is what the costume looks like. It's badass. It's green. And you can check the link in the description as well if you want to go get this outfit. It's actually a very, very good price. And the company that worked with me, um, I think it was Champion of Cosplay. They were super helpful in making sure I bought the right size and getting all the measurements taken care of. They were very nice and they said to get it done really fast. So hopefully that video will be coming out pretty soon when I get the whole outfit and I can start putting all this stuff together. But other than that, if you guys enjoyed this first part of this costume build, be sure to give this video a fat thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask down below. You guys have a great rest of the week, and I will see you goons whenever the next video comes out.